hello beautiful people it is me tasha k with goddess day and for those of you who don't know goddess day represents that you are not helpless hopeless or powerless in fact you are powerful beyond measure and you have everything that you need to improve your financial situation so welcome to all of my wealth builders whether you are on your 1k journey your 10k journey or your six-figure journey, this is the place for you. Today, we are getting into a topic that is near and dear to my heart because it really impacts people on their financial journey. And that is generational poverty and the cycles that come from financial trauma. I know this might not be one of our funnest topics, but it is so important and I think that there are people who are dealing with the impacts of financial trauma and they don't necessarily know that they are. I remember when I think about my earliest memory of starting to feel a sense of guilt or shame about money, I was with my mom and my sister and it was the most beautiful sunny day in Chicago. I literally remember the sun shining so golden bright. The sky was so blue. And I, you couldn't tell me nothing. My mama had just did my hair. My scalp was greased. My burrets was clacking from side to side. And I'm just walking down the street so happy. Just happy to be out with my mom and my sister. And we get to the store that we're about to walk in. And my mom kneels down, and as black moms often do, she said, don't touch nothing, don't look at nothing, don't ask for nothing, because you can't get nothing. And something in me snapped, like I could feel the joy break. And for her, you know, She's just talking. She's just basically trying to tell me to behave myself. But what I actually heard was, first of all, I wasn't even thinking about getting nothing out this store, so I don't know why you felt the need to come for me like that. But what I, what I felt was that I'm not worthy of things that I want. That my mom is more than happy to provide the things that I need but she is unwilling to care about the things that I want. And when I tell you that that impacted me for the rest of my life, even until this very day, if you look at the things that I buy for myself or the things that I'm typically gonna want, I'm usually not going after the luxurious things. I'm looking at what do I need, all right? What's gonna get the job done? I'm very practical and I think and even when I start trying to think like, okay, maybe I want something a little nicer, the thought comes back to me, but do you need it? Okay, I'll just, I'll just get this. It's okay. I don't need to get the nicer version. I'm happy with this. And the reality is I'm genuinely happy, you know, but I also know that there is a remnant of that conversation that has left an imprint on me. And what, what I want to be careful of is not letting, not having that force me to cling to a sense of scarcity and not force me to devalue my desires and what I want just because of a story that I told myself when I was a little girl when my mama was just trying to have me behave. And you would be surprised how many instances there are in our lives where something happened your parents were having an argument, your parents got a divorce, you went over to your friend's house and they had a nicer house than you. You will be surprised the things that you experienced as a young person, how that played out in your life later on. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna be talking about financial trauma, not so that you can wallow in it, you know, not trying to just bring up stuff, but so that you can identify it and not allow it to hold you back. Not allow those thoughts, those mindsets, 
those conversations that were implanted in your head when you were smaller, we don't want those holding you back. We want you to know and understand that you are worthy of every good thing, okay? And that there's nothing beyond your reach. And if you're willing to work for it and if you believe that you can have it, you can, all right? But we want to make sure that you're able to identify what are some of those circumstances that a lot of us may have gone through uh, as children that are playing out cycles, all right? Because a lot of us, you know, you find yourself in a financial cycle and you don't know why. You know, you find yourself, you get a car, it break down. You get a car, it break down. And you're like, why is it that all my stuff breaks down? Well, it's because you think that when you need something, you should buy the cheapest version. <laughs> all right, so the cycles that you find yourself stuck in Right, you save money, you're really good at saving money, but somehow something always comes up and then you spend it all. There's these financial cycles that we find ourselves in and we don't know how to break through. We're like, okay, I'm gonna try harder next time. I'm gonna do better next time. I'm gonna be more disciplined. And none of it ever works. And sometimes it's because we haven't identified the root of the behavior. And so we haven't been able to rip it out and plant something new and experience something new. All right. So let's get into it. Number one, did your parents argue about money or did anybody in your life argue about money? For people who experience a lot of arguments and turmoil and stress around financial conversations growing up, they often turn into people who hide from financial conversations. They don't want to go check the mail. When they do check the mail and they see it's a bill, they sit it on the counter. They don't want to open it. They don't want to look at it because for them, confronting your finances means that it's going to become an issue. It's going to become a problem. It's going to lead to negativity and they would rather avoid it. So these type of people often develop an avoidant relationship with money. But there's always two sides of the same coin because two people can experience the same thing but have a completely different reaction. So even though some people can go through that circumstances where they have a very volatile environment when it comes to discussing money, Somebody else can go through that and say, you know what, I'm going to hyper focus on money because I don't ever want money to cause me these types of problems in my life. And so the people in their life are just trying to chill and they're like, but have you thought about this money thing? Have you looked at this one? Did you check the budget this month? Their partner is like, babe, yes, I've checked the budget. Please leave me alone. And so we develop a lot of the extremes that we develop in our response responses are a result of the things that we have experienced in our lives. And it's not just one potential outcome. There are multiple different outcomes, but we're going to look at the duality of it today, how you can be on one side or another, but there are so many different places that you could also be in between. All right. Number two, this is the one that I spoke to. Did you frequently hear no as a child. This one, I think, is impacting so many people and they don't even know it. So the way that it impacted me was it had me start telling myself no, right? If my, my mom was telling me no, my dad was telling me no, my aunt was telling me no, okay, no. We can't afford it, we can't have it, we don't need it, the answer is no. So what happened was I would walk into a store. Nobody had to tell me no. I would just tell myself no and put it back. Now, I ain't going to lie. It has been amazing for my finances. <laughs> so I'm lucky in that I developed a type of financial trauma that allowed me to be incredible with my finances. But the other side of that is what does your joy look like? What is your sense of worthiness like? And those are things 
that I've had to work on. And so now that I know that, you know what, my joy and my worthiness comes from the inside, I've been able to balance the equation because now if I tell myself no, I understand that it has nothing to do with my worthiness. All right. The other side of that coin is my sister. My sister, she's not going to tell herself no. She about to buy all the bags. She about to buy the Gucci shades. You know, she about to buy her daughter the coach purse. And it's because she decided she was done with hearing no. And that she works hard and she deserves to be able to treat herself. And I ain't gonna lie, it hasn't been wonderful for her finances. I hope she don't watch this. <laughs> No, her finances are good, but this type of mindset where you start thinking, well, I deserve to have this, and I earned the right to do this. You start looking at the things that are irrelevant to your actual financial situation because the question is not whether you earned it or whether you deserve it. The question is, what does that bank account have to say about this? What are your financial resources looking like? Do you have any assets to your name? Those are the types of questions that would be more relevant. But for people who have heard no a lot, they sometimes develop an idea of starting to, to, to tell themselves, I deserve this and I have earned that and it has an impact on the bank account. And so that's something that you want to be mindful of. If you hear yourself saying, I worked hard, I can get this. I should be able to buy it. Who going to check me? I'll spend a check and get it right back. If you hear yourself saying those things, it might be a result of some financial trauma that's there that you need to unpack. Okay? Number three. Oh, this one is one of my favorites. Are you... An eldest daughter. I see some, oh wow, eldest <coughs> daughter's in the building. That's a whole trauma in and of itself. I ain't gonna lie, I love being a big sister. That's because I have a lot of bossy energy and it's a wonderful outlet for that. But also, it's very easy to develop a savior complex. You think that if you don't do it, it's not gonna get done. You think that if you don't enforce it, they're not gonna do it. You think that you have to tell other people what to do, you have to help, help them, you have to save them from their, themselves, and if they don't have it, then you have to give it to them. Now, <clears throat> the eldest daughter might find herself, or the eldest son, you might find yourself always trying to save the day. And if you grew up in church and you saw your parents just, you know, giving their tithes, giving their offerings, giving to charity, another thing that can develop, even if you're not an eldest daughter, but especially if you are, is this idea that you have to give all of yourself, give everything, any need that comes up, it's your job to fulfill it. And then you see this as a source of your generosity, but you don't understand the impact that it's having on your finances. And when you, mar you have martyred your financial situation, and then you say it's because of generosity, but really it was a result of your irresponsibility. And that is something that I need a lot of people to understand. You think you're being generous, but you're really being irresponsible. One of the examples that I like to give is, if you get bricks, let's say that your dollars are bricks, and every time people ask you for a brick, you give it away. And every time you give them they brick, they go throw it away, they do something with it, you don't know what they do with it. And then at the end of the day, nobody has shelter. You didn't take the brick to build the shelter. They didn't take the brick to build the shelter. And now we're all stuck in a cycle of giving and receiving and giving and receiving. And there is no protection here. There is no covering here. 
And so for people who are eldest daughters, you can't martyr yourself and think that you're doing a good job. For people who watch their parents give, give, give until they had nothing left, you can't have that be your portion. But the flip side of that is being stingy, withholding, not wanting to open your hand. All right, and so I think it's so interesting how all of these situations, they all have a flip side to them. So if you find yourself saying, I got it out the mud, they can too. That might be a result of some trauma. If you find yourself saying, um, people have to figure out how to help themselves, I'm not helping them, that might be a result of financial trauma. And if you're never, ever able to put yourself in the giving mode, that also means that you're highly unlikely to be able to be in the receiving mode. So some of those, some of you, I know, you're like, I'd rather die before I ask for help. Trauma. You're like, I mean, I guess I, if, if my house was on fire, I guess I would ask for a glass of water. Trauma. Okay. So, <clears throat> number four. Did you grow up in poverty? Or you can just think about it as growing up, not having all of your needs met. You were constantly in an environment where there was true scarcity. We talk about a scarcity mindset these days. It's like, no, some people are experiencing real life scarcity. There's not enough food in the house. They don't have clothes for school. There's no back to school supplies. There's real life scarcity going on. And when you experience that, it leaves a mark. Some people are like, I'm never going to go through that again. And then they become crazy focused savers. Some people are like, I never got to enjoy anything as a child, and now I'm going to ball. Both of those things are the impact of the trauma that you experience. And so what you want to look at is, what were those experiences and how do I deal with them so that I can have a healthy relationship with money and not have something in the background driving my actions from a place of hurt, from a place of neglect, from a place of fear, or from a, pla from a place of scarcity. And then finally, this one I don't think we talk about enough. And I think it's very relevant for where we are now collectively. Did you grow up in comfort? You know, your parents provided you with everything that you needed. They gave you the best opportunities possible. They made sure that everything that you needed was at your disposal. You were able to participate in everything that you wanted. There was never a clothing item, a technology item, nothing. You never wanted for nothing. Everything that you asked for, you got. And then you went to college and you excelled and you did everything that you were supposed to do. But now you're trying to figure out how do I provide myself the same lifestyle that my parents did? I'm a psychologist. My parents were doctors and lawyers, accountants. I'm, I'm a psychologist. We don't make that type of money. And now I'm trying to figure out how do I give myself the lifestyle that my parents gave me because the math is not mathing. I didn't know that it was going to be like this. I had a conversation the other day with a young man who was telling me, I thought that I was going to get out of school and go into a high paying job, but the high paying job isn't there. And I've been applying and applying and applying. And it's just, it just hasn't worked out for me. There's a sense of resentment. There's a sense of anger. And you want to give up because things aren't going the way that you thought that they were going to go. Trauma. Instead of being able to be with things how they are, you have this, this rose-colored lens of how things should be, and it's stopping you from participating in reality because this reality isn't exactly what you wanted it to be. So those are the different types of experiences 
that can lead to generational poverty because you are caught in a cycle as the result of financial trauma. Now, one thing I want to make sure that I noted, that I note, is that sometimes when we're thinking about generational wealth, we think that the only way to pass down generational wealth is with assets. But I want you to know, for some of you, for where you are, passing down knowledge is essential. Passing down habits is critical, truly a, a, a game changer. If you are able to pass down an abundance mindset and a healthy relationship with money, your bloodline is going to thrive. It has a much higher likelihood of thriving. So don't get caught up in this idea that the only way for you to pass something down to the next generation is for you to have a lot of money. You could just have a lot of sense. You could just have a lot of good sense and pass that down. And you would be shocked at how underrated that is. Okay, so thank you guys so much for being a part of this conversation. Like I said, it is near and dear to my heart. I hope that in some of these places, you have been able to see yourself and really begin to start to uproot the, the financial trauma that is there so that you can plant new seeds and start telling yourself a new story and start having new financial outcomes, okay? Thank you again. If you want to tap into the financial revolution that is going on in the Goddess Safe space, make sure that you stay tuned for our next video. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you next time.